Indeed. So he decided to throw out High Tide out of his picked home maps now. Um, so, ladies and gents, this is going to be game number two of the grand finals of the biggest tournament in Age of Empires 2 history since 20 years. Well, not of history in terms of prize pool, uh, but in the la in the history of the last 20 years, that is. So, we got Koten Khan spawning in the west, playing as the Japanese, which I think is the better safe choice for this map. Uh, might be wrong though, but most players would agree to that since most of the top players since th that was uh, the civilization that got picked throughout the course of the tournament on this map most frequently. So uh, uh, down in the south of the map we got Saladin playing it as the Persians. So I've not seen Persians I think a single time on this map. So what do you mm -hmm. think about this Sith pick and uh, do you think Persians are out safe here or do you think it's it's even? I think they are quite okay. Back in the day you, uh, I would certainly be in favor of the Japanese players. Sure. Persians were a very unidimensional civilization but now the commander and crossbows I feel like they stand a chance in, with faster work in DCs. The one thing that I like is with Japanese you're going to have 5% faster work in fish and ships with Persians you're going to have 5% faster work in DCs and dogs, which means that you're going to have one extra villager by the time you click up to the fuel age. And villagers, of course, are going to be more versatile, so you're going to be able to take um, any type of resource, while fish ships are going to be confined to water. It's also much more exposed for fish ships, because um, there is no way for you to wall fish ships, and in the fuel age, those are going to be more exposed to villagers as well. Yeah, but... Um... Japanese fishing ships just it takes just so long for them to to go down. You don't really That's need the point. protection unless you have uh, your own. No, wait. Uh, you don't re really need. You wouldn't need those those walls unless you don't have uh, your own protection in in shape of fire in, sh in shape of fire galleys. Normal galleys probably not going to be built on this map since. Uh, the lake is rather small. Well, there is still enough space to micro around. And recently, in a rated game um, on like 1700 uh, rated 1v1 le level, I got in into quite some trouble on Mediterranean against someone who played Galleys. So oh that... man, sorry. There is there is a boar coming into <sighs> Saladin's DC. So the in Galleys move sheep. Yeah. Did he steal that all the way from Blue's base? Mm hmm. Wow. So that's actually such a massive difference already. He's taking another, another unnecessary hit to his scout, though. So, even though Coach and Khan will be down on food quite massively here. Ooh, I wanted to say it's probably not the end of the world since uh, his opposing player's scout is lower on HP. But he does not have food underneath his town center anymore. He's forced to go uh, to to deer already. This is a disastrously oh, bad man. start for Koti and Khan. So he has to play this somehow out of the box. He can't compete for water anymore uh, if Saladin is just going for the standard grush play as opening, especially since that's uh, a civilization. Uh, that's an opening that is even getting bolstered more by the Persian Sith bonuses. I am like in Saladin's position here a lot more men and even though coach oh, is going to be that war. Yeah, he's, he's trying to go for the equalizer, but Saladin doesn't care. He's closing into the resources to click to the fuel late, while the damage to uh, Koti and Khan's economy has been done already. Sweet stuff exactly. in favor of Saladin here. So this exactly. is probably going to be another tournament in the, uh, of those big tournaments that the Viper is taking, is taking the prize money off. Yeah, it's, it's good. I hope it's not a 4-0 result, <laughs> but by the looks of things, it's probably going to be something like 4-1 or 4-2 if things keep going like this anyway. So now he's on the way to, well, we don't know if it's him, but we presume so, or at least I presume. Um, Saladin is on the way to the feudal age. 
Um, so he's he's sitting on two fishing ships at, at the moment. A little bit late on the third one, but a lot has happened throughout the course of the Dark Age. Now he lost the scout, so there is at least a, a little bit of retaliation for, if that's the correct word, uh, for Cartier and Can there. Yeah. Now he's sending. Now Saladin is sending a villager to that middle island, uh, looking to drop another dock there. Let's see where he's going to build it. Is he going to take the marlin or is he going to build it more to the shells? Looks more like the shells to me. He values more taking out uh, the fish of his opponent fast than get, uh, get, getting the uh, juicy deep sea fish. So what do you like more here? Having the 50% wood discount on drop-off buildings or starting with 50 extra wood? Mm, I prefer cheaper drop of points right yeah when we do, when we only when we only when we only compare those two bonuses then for sure yeah it's... Ooh, Kotian Khan is going forward with four villagers as he should when he's going for man at arms so let's see how much damage he's managing he's going to manage to find for himself and with Japanese you have so much wood uh, due to those cheap drop of pullings one could make an argument that he should just, as soon as he reaches his feudal age, instead of drop, ooh, attempt of Saladin to, to, wall, to wall them in. It failed though, so uh, Cote and Kian kept his eyes open. So Cote and Kian, maybe he should even drop an aggressive archery range with those four villagers instead of a tower as their first move once he's in feudal age. Let's see what's, what he's going to do. It's not, I'm not expecting him to do that, but never rule that out. He's going for a tower. Uh, on that go world, let's see, is that woodland in range as well? Oh, only the, f only the left so. part of the woodland is left slightly in range. Yeah. Counter tower coming down for a Saladin. And look at Saladin, he's playing this so safe, he's already fully walled. Uh, playing this double dock and taking the lead on the water. Nice move by Cote and Kern to pull away that fishing ship. Uh, now, nice defense for Saladin, leading one piece of palisade there, getting those two villagers involved to break down this tower. Uh, Cote and Kian on stone though. Let's see, is Saladin on stone as well? He has one villager taking stone, so that was... Was that the dock builder? It looks like that, yeah. Dock builder going to take a little bit of stone. So his rally point is there as well, so as soon as he'll have the wood, I'm predicting him to drop a mining camp even before he's going to build his second military building. He made a barracks, uh, he might even, ooh, he got a villager kill even with his with his wills. Sweet stuff for him, so he might uh, decide to make a spear or something, not expected, but you never know. No man at arms upgrade coming in for blue, so... Heavy misplay, misplay by him economically. Uh, Hunter is idle in the south now as well, as well. So he's in a world of trouble right now. As he, as uh, Saladin already has seven more economy units than Kotian Khan has. Indeed, that is going to go up to eight even right now. And with the water control, Saladin is going to be able to keep on going for, for more fish ships if he chooses to. And yeah, his economy is going to sky skyrocket from now on. Gochan, on the other hand, has been losing the four villages that he was trying to equalize things with, so it's going to be looking grimmer than ever. Gochan can, though, he managed to take down one of those fires of uh, of Saladin, and suddenly he has the water, the, the lead on the water. His navy is larger than Saladin's, and Saladin's only producing from one dock right now as he's queuing up. Uh, two more fishing ships. So is he going to lose a fishing a fishing ship or two here? Beautiful move by him. He's pulling them back, uh, and now he still has that villager actually in center. So uh, I was wrong that he used him to take stone. Just building houses there. Maybe going to repair even a fishing ship, but he has to micro quite a lot to save every single fishing ship there right now. What happened with the forward? Did he go home? Yeah, he actually went home with it. 
uh, yep. Cortian Khan went home with his villagers again. So he has an archery range now at home. Um, did he, I don't see anything being produced by him though. So Saladin losing another fire, but now he has the lead on water again, numbers wise. Two fires against one, and Cortian Khan's fishing ship is probably going to be doomed again. No, he got another fire out. So if Saladin's is, if Saladin's not paying attention, he has to pull. You have to pull that fire back, and he's doing that. So it's not making this one uh, more this game more open than he needs to. Indeed. Now taking a look at the economy for both players. Food count is actually going to be looking much better for Coaching Can. Gold count is going to be looking quite decent for him, and wood count is going to be looking decent by him. Um, he on water should be. Losing this because of uh, Saladin starting to go heavily into fire gallows as well, and also having the villager to repair uh, ships with. Oh, he's patrolling but in with his fires, uh, starting to uh, work down that one fishing ship. And look at Cody and Khan, he actually sneaked around with two fires. Uh, Saladin getting slightly debated, but now he's bringing it. Ooh, we're losing a fire there, going for the demo shot. And he's just barely going to be able, with the help of that demo, on 3 HP to take down Coke and Can's uh, weak fire ship there. What time are you at right now? 18.59 now. Alright. 19.59. Gonna slow down for a moment. Laxon coming down by Coke and Can, so he wants to kick to the to the castle age, while Saladin is actually still stuck deeply in the feudal age, uh, surprisingly to me. Didn't go onto berries as heavily as he could have gone to find his way uh, to the next age faster. Well, got water uh, control now. Three fires against zero. Kotian Khan is repairing that dock. And Saladin is trying to reach that villager, but he cannot since the dock is blocking and since fires cannot shoot over obstacles. The, the obstacles are always going to take the damage. And Kotian Khan is not giving up the water. He's still producing a, another demo from this dock, which is really risky about someone with the micro capabilities of Saladin, because he's always going to, sp to split away his, his uh, fires against your demos, but since produ the production rate of demos is faster than for fires, you produce one in 40 seconds and a fire in 60 seconds, uh, it's still reasonable, especially considering that Saladin is on three docks at the moment, of course, Kotian Khan can't know that, and Saladin even added a galley to ensure that Kotian Khan can't repair anymore. Beautiful move by him. Mm -hmm. Kotian Khan, 65% to the castle age. That is exactly what he needed. Saladin is going to be going up very soon, though he actually has the resources and he just picked up. I'm at 2150 right now, and yeah, the fire galleys are coming out from Kotian Khan's uh, docks over there to try oh, and Kotian Khan and garrisoning fire his fires. Together. Demo coming out, how much damage is, is it going to do? Ooh, Saladin uh, doing a little bit of crisis control there, but still he's he took more damage than, than he needed to. Oh, look at his control there with those fires, beautiful dodging, uh, beautifully dodging the second demo, sh demo uh, raft, and now another one, well, doing a little bit more than 100 damage combined, when we uh, com combine the damage both of those fires have taken, that is. Now Archer Sneak into the gold of Kotian Khan, and he doesn't have an answer to that at the moment. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't produce Gurms, he didn't produce crossbows. This is a disaster for his economy at home, even though he's in the castle age. So let's see how he's continuing with that. He's forced to drop down a siege workshop, but he went for fire ships. Built a sneaky third dock. Something that should not have happened if Saladin would have done and accept a ridiculously good job with patrolling around his, his all of his ships. But of course, uh, you have to cover so much area that, that that costs so much APM to make sure your opponent can't dock anywhere with that long of a shoreline while you have to manage your economy while he's going for that uh, counterattack. So uh, no, uh, no blame uh, even on the best player in the world that he didn't manage to prevent this dock. And look at that, yeah, Kotian Khan retaking the water. Is he retaking the water? Well, it looked quite promising at the beginning for him, but Saladin 
still sitting on how much? Seven fire ships, and he's still repairing those. While Kotian can only four. So it's looking darn sexy for him on water. Those villagers which escaped from that gold raid are taking back some deep fish now with them. Not sure about that move. I would have liked to see a TC up there on this gold, but I mean he did not have the wood at that moment. And that extra uh, that extra gold up there. And Cody and Kern going with the stable now as well. Stable archery range. And if he wants to top things off, he should add a siege workshop as well to make it really nas nasty for Cody and Kern, who already has a monastery though. So he's really he's playing the smart. He saw the monastery, so he's he's not going to play this one over aggressive. He is playing conservatively from home, second town center, third town center, even as a third town center, both of those uh, buildings got built actually quite some time ago already, and he's pulling ahead more and more in economy. 58 villagers for green, 50 for blue, 73 to 53 population for both for town center on the way for Japanese for Kotian Khan. Oh, nice mangonel shop. What do you think Coach and Khan is going to be able to do to come back in this game? Uh, can't see a win condition now. Let's see. He has to probably go to Arbalest. Since his opponent already has crossbows out on the field. So just boom up, uh, crisis control. Try to take, try to take as little damage as possible. Pull the, pull back villagers in time, um, and then well, let me just see Green's economy. On the other hand, oh, he's about to. Now nah, he can't just play it that way since Green is going to drop an aggressive castle as well. Yeah, well, incredibly rough looking for Kotian but right now. But Kotian, Kotian can't expect that, so. So the approach I would suggest him or I would do here wouldn't work since uh, I would just get killed by the aggressive castle uh, trying to do the only thing with which you'd have a reasonable chance in the long run against the Persian army composition. Look at that, that beautiful uh, Magna controlled by Saladin as well, taking down Kotian Khan's Magna 1 for a 0. Now we are going to have two Magnals, one taking each TC on the southeast, and then we are going to have the offensive Magnal for Kochan fighting against those crossbows in the northeast uh, of Kochan's base. Saladin still not attempting that aggressive castle though, even though he has 1150 stone in the bank. Now he's laying the foundation, let's see how many villagers. So that's approximately 10 villagers on the way. And two more stables being thrown down in front as well. So he is uh, going to play this with quite a quite a heavy castle age regression here. We have now ballistics on the way. We just finished so let's see. Oh, for Salavin. Courtian can sees the castle. Let's see what happens. Loses another uh, couple of villagers there on the gold. Panic time for him now. He has to garrison them, maybe he doesn't even care anymore. Oh, good and shot in the north of Goetian's base against the crossbow. Oh. So a little bit of hope he can cling himself onto. Playstyle wise, no, I wouldn't be too surprised if Saladin is leery as well, but uh, he picks Island, so uh, a rather viper. Right. Nah, he played this. Uh, he played all the games really, really defensively from the get-go. Okay, I'll take that back. Walls, uh, <laughs> straight walls to minute nine in both games. Beautiful micro, Magnol micro again. One for a zero. He's the master of Magnols, man. Is it MBL then? <laughs> MBL, one of, according to Orlu, one of the best Magnol micro in the biz. I mean, I have to agree to that, but. Probably not. 
It's probably, probably not him. There you go. Yeah, I, I will be giving that title to Nikav too. Oh, okay. One of the best um, micro abilities with Mangonels. For that yeah, player. for sure. As I was just getting in Wubli 2017 or something, um, I, I spectated a game on Yucatan 2v2 with Nikov involved against other experts, someone like Dogao or I don't remember or Fiat, and he uh, took like took out like six Mangonels with just one, but one by one, it was not just one shot. <laughs> it was ridiculous, man. Yeah. Well, for achievements, on the other hand, we are going to have, as expected, much, much better score for Saladin in every single regard. He's going to have a better KD, largest army, stronger economy, even faster uptime to the fuel age. Castle age time was faster for coaching, but not by much, and it didn't really make a huge world of difference. Relics capture 4 to 1 in favor of Saladin. Although it didn't make a whole lot of difference either, only 300 gold collected from that. And the timeline is quite telling. Very, very dominant game for the winner of game number one, fighting in the loser's home map. Okay, so 